Good afternoon and good evening everyone to the channel IT Simplified. In today's session, we'll see how to enable extended security updates by using Azure Arc. But before I show you the deployment steps, let's understand what is ESUs and why we need this. Now, extended security updates are based on Microsoft product lifecycle. Now, take an example of uh, Server 2012R2, which was recently end of life. Uh, it was in October of uh, this year. So Microsoft has typically a life cycle, typically for servers, these are 10 years. What happens in case you still want to run these machines or you have application dependencies beyond these 10 years? That's where extended security updates will come into play because once you purchase that, you have access to the security patches, critical updates that can be applied to these servers. Now, let's say from the option perspective, let's take some examples here. Let's say you're running on-prem box, right? This is on-prem. And this is Azure. And this on-prem, you are running server 2012. It can be 2012 or 2012R2. Now, one option is that you can move this box into Azure. You can run it over here. Same way, 2012R2. And you get free access to extended security updates. Now, you will think why Microsoft is giving free ESUs even though you're running 2012 because Microsoft pushes to move everybody to the cloud and this is another incentive that they are providing you. So even if you're running 2012R2 and you're utilizing this in Azure, you get access to the free extended security updates. That's option one. Another option can be that you can upgrade this box, let's say 2012R2 to 2016, 2019 or 2022. You can either run it on-prem or in Azure. In that case, you don't need an ESU because from the product lifecycle perspective, is still uh, uh, not within that time frame that uh, Microsoft needs to enable extended security updates for you, right? That's another option. But what happens in case you have application dependency and this application needs to be on this 2012R2 and you cannot move that to Azure, you need to run this on-prem. In that case, you need to purchase extended security updates. And uh, one of the options that you can utilize in order to do that is by enabling this through Azure Arc. Now, what is happening is behind the scene, once you enable that through Azure Arc, you need to deploy an agent. It's an Azure agent, which is called Connected Machine Agent. And this is the agent through which is going to talk to Azure resources. And you have a couple of options for connectivity. You can enable this through public endpoint because you need to have outbound connectivity. You can do this through a proxy or you can even also have a private link. I'll show you on the, on the Azure portal, these options, but you can pick any of these options. Uh, but this is the way you can do by enabling Azure Arc and you pick any of these options over here. But let's, from the, from the licensing perspective, which I think is always challenging, there are a couple of more things that you need to keep in mind. You can pick these extended security updates from data center edition, standard edition, and you have this flexibility of purchasing between physical cores or virtual cores. And let's try to understand this with an example and because it will depend upon your scenario, what kind of environment that you have. 
So let's say you're running on-prem environment. This is physical box. The host is running, let's say, server 2016, standard edition. And in this box, you have four machines, four VMs, each with eight core. And in total, you have 32 physical cores here. And out of these four machines, only one machine, this one is only running 2012. Rest all the machine they're on latest one, let's say 2016 or even the new ones, right? Now, in this kind of scenario, you have this option of, and another thing, just want to mention that uh, it comes in pack of 16 and two, these licensing, right? Just going back to this example, now you have this option of licensing the whole thing of 32 cores because it's running standard you can purchase 16 times 2 standard edition physical cores but i think it's going to be more costly the other i think what the cost effective option is that because out of these four machine only one machine is running 2012 rest all of them they are new they, they don't need extended security updates you can go and just license this and you can do this through eight v core so this was physical i can go the other option can be eight v core license again going to be standard edition now it comes in pack of two so you can buy two times four which is going to be eight core and it's going to cover this particular machine this can be scenario now let's take another scenario let's say you have on-prem this is running server 2012 and this is running standard edition and then you have two machines over here right and both of them running 2012 and in this you have uh, say eight physical cores now in this case You'll be better off buying because the minimum requirement for the physical box is that you need to go with 16 cores, right? So you can buy 16 standard edition physical cores here, right? It will cover both these two machines. Optionally, you can also go with separate one, right? But the minimum requirement for, for virtualized or for VM is eight. So it's going to be still two eight V cores. Uh, it will remain same. You can go either option, but to, just to keep the thing simple, you can go with the six in standard core. Now that's scenario number three, two. Let's look at the physical box. Now, let's say you have two physical server, they're not virtualized, and each of them, they have eight physical cores. Right? How you license this? Now in this case, minimum required for a physical boxes, obviously you cannot use the V cores, so it's going to be 16. Now minimum requirement is that you need to have 16, you'll need 16 times two. Standard edition here. Right? So these are a couple of things that you need to keep in mind. I know that, you know, licensing can be really confusing. Uh, I will always reach out to the licensing team, but these are some of the things that you need to keep in mind. And on top of that, you got to make sure that you have an active software assurance. That's one of the prerequisite in order to enable that. Okay, so let me flip over to the Azure portal and let me show you the steps that's going to be involved. So I have uh, owner access to this subscription. I'm going to go and search for ARC. So step number one will be to onboard the machine from on-prem. So for that, I'm going to go to the infrastructure. I can go and add server. You can add single server, you can add multiple. You can go and generate the script. It's basically a PowerShell script, uh, part of which will be deploying that agent. You got to pick your resource group, your region. You can pick an activity method, any of them, public proxy or private endpoint. You Optionally, you can also enable auto-manage. No Azure best practices for production or dev test. 
I'm going to go to next. You can always tag it based on your data center city region. And this is the script you need to download. Now, this is a PowerShell script that you're going to run against your that uh, server. And uh, once you run that, the agent will get deployed. And that is how it's going to talk to your Azure resources. Uh, let me show you quickly. I have one box which is on-prem and it is running server 2012. And what I did is I have already run that script. And as part of the script, this agent got deployed. You can check that under the program. So Azure Connected Machine Agent is deployed. And if I go to the Azure portal and go back to the Azure Arc, you can see under all Azure Arc resource, I have the server which has been onboarded. So that's step number two. Now, second step going to be to create that under management, go to extend security updates. You're going to create the license for this. And again, I need to deploy this in a resource group. You're going to give it a name. You have this option of activating now or later. So let's say, for example, if you have not onboarded the machine, you can just activate later and you can then tie it up or you can activate now uh, and you can pick the region. Again, uh, my resources in Canada Central, I'm going to pick that. And this way you're going to specify the data center or standard. You can specify the core type physical versus virtual core. And as I said, core pack comes in 16 and two. Now in this case, I'm talking about only one machine. I can pick four of these because on a virtualized minimum is eight cores. So you can see total cores are eight. And then you need to specify that, you know, that you have software assurance. Now Microsoft doesn't have any way to check, but in case they audit, they will ask for the proof. So you need to make sure that you have software assurance against your those on-prem boxes. And you will click on the create button. And once that is done, it will show up over here. And you see that the status is active activated and then you're going to link these resources against those uh, eligible resource or those on-prem boxes. But this is the flow you're going to follow when it comes to enabling extended security updates through Azure Arc. And the good thing is that all your billing will be through your cost management. So in case you have more resources in Azure like storage or Kubernetes or databases, as part of that cost, You'll also have a separate line for extended security updates. So within one MU or through one billing mechanism, you'll be able to, there is no any secure uh, product key or anything that you need to punch in on your boxes. And I think this much more cleaner way of uh, managing and pushing those updates and critical patches that you need to do on these 2012 and 2012 R2 server. Hopefully this session was helpful. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.